As many of you know, Elizabeth Warren has dropped out of the 2020 presidential race, and she has yet to endorse anyone. And when speaking to reporters about whether or not she will endorse anyone, she said she uh, basically hasn't come to that decision yet. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, and in terms of whether or not she'll endorse Bernie Sanders, to me, just the fact that she has to think about it is a horrible sign, but it's not that surprising. If you followed Elizabeth Warren's trajectory throughout the course of this primary, she went from being with Bernie Sanders 100% to trying to tear him down by lying about him at every opportunity she had when she was on television. So, if she doesn't endorse Bernie Sanders, that's not going to be a surprise to me. In fact, there is a possibility that she endorses Joe Biden. That's a very real possibility. But we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. But the question is, going forward, um, will Elizabeth Warren supporters back Bernie Sanders? And I'm seeing a lot of people say, yes, I'm going from Warren to Bernie. She was my number one choice, but I believe in progressive policies and I want to get behind the person who has the best policies. I think that that is the obvious thing to do, right? If you are voting, then presumably you believe that there is a net benefit based on the policies that people will uh, put into law if you elect them. That's that's the whole point of politics. We don't vote based on personality, or at least we shouldn't. But, you know, theoretically, it makes the most sense for Elizabeth Warren supporters to back Bernie Sanders. Will that happen? Will she... Will Bernie be able to capture all of her support? And I think the answer is no. So I don't necessarily know what's going to happen going forward. This is definitely a two-way race between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. They're going to be pretty close in delegates. Although I will say that on Tuesday, uh, five or six more states go. And that's probably going to be a good night for Biden. But I want you to keep in mind that this race is incredibly volatile and it can change like that. Bernie went from being the front runner and possibly you know uh, was going to emerge as the presumptive nominee on super tuesday and the opposite happened and it all changed in the span of a couple of days so if it changed before that quickly then i think that it's possible that it can change again um so we don't we don't really know what's going to happen going forward but all that we can do is do our best to make sure that bernie sanders wins and you've got to understand that this is difficult because we're, we're not running against, you know, a couple of other candidates. We're not just running against an entire party. We're running against an entire economic system. Capitalism is absolutely ruthless. And we knew that it was never just going to concede to Bernie Sanders. It was never just going to roll over and allow him to march to the nomination. So, you know, you saw how Barack Obama very likely pulled some strings behind the scenes for Joe Biden. Got Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar to drop out. We saw Michael Bloomberg drop out and endorse Joe Biden, which is funny because now Joe Biden is thoroughly embracing Mike Bloomberg when this individual is openly racist. He's openly racist. He's transphobic. And just, what was it, a month ago? Bernie Sanders was a horrible person for not disavowing Joe, uh, Joe Rogan. So, I mean, the thing about... American politics is that if you're on the left, you're always at a disadvantage. It doesn't matter what race, you are always at a disadvantage because think about this. We're running against capitalism. We're running against an entire corporate media apparatus that at every single turn undermines everything that we do. And I believe that there is a lot of things that we probably could have done better going into Super Tuesday, right? There's a fixed amount of things that we can control. But there's a large portion of things that's outside of our control that we have to deal with. And maybe we can't overcome that, electorally speaking. But overall, the odds were always stacked against us. We were always the underdog. And that's not going to change anytime soon. And, you know, all of the bad things that we see and hear about Bernie Sanders on MSNBC, the next time we get another progressive champion, whether it's AOC or Rashida Tlaib, they're going to find a way to tear them down because it's not about identity. It is not about anything but defending the status quo. So you can say, you know, just, I, I think maybe Bernie Sanders is flawed. You, you can believe that he's flawed. You can believe that he made some decisions that are bad. But at the end of the day, no matter who the person is that's the standard bearer for progressivism and democratic socialism in the United States, they are going up against not just one machine 
or two machines, corporate media, the Democratic Party establishment, but an entire economic system. And that's not just here in the United States, but globally. I mean, think about this. Biden emerged as the front runner, the clear front runner after Super Tuesday. And what happened? Healthcare stocks went through the roof. This system is going to try to crush us. And the whole point is to get you down and is to demoralize you, right? So this is something that we all kind of predicted. And it was almost unbelievable that we had so much momentum. And so, look, I'm not counting Bernie out of this yet. Um, I think that it's possible that we win. Have our chances gone down substantially? Of course. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you and, and tell you he's the front runner. He's not the front runner. It's Joe Biden who's the front runner. And if Joe Biden's the nomination, in my view, the 2020 election is over because Trump walks to re-election with ease. Because for all the things about Hillary Clinton that we disliked, Joe Biden is exponentially worse. At least Hillary Clinton, she was, you know, quick on her toes, right? She she was a better candidate than Joe Biden, and she was still a terrible candidate, and she still lost. And so going up against a stronger version of Donald Trump, an incumbent who's going to run on this good economy, and the media is going to do propaganda on his behalf, I mean... <laughs> Joe Biden, Joe Biden's not going to beat Trump. That's it's almost like laughable to me. Um, so you know, th this is the primary is everything. That's all I'll say. The primary is everything because if Bernie Sanders isn't the nominee, I don't think we have a shot at beating Donald Trump. But coming back to the broader question currently that we're all kind of asking ourselves, uh, will Elizabeth Warren supporters rally behind Bernie Sanders? I think there's a lot of people that are. And let me just say, our movement is open to absolutely every single person. I don't care where you come from who you were with previously, I'm almost going to sing a Backstreet Boys song, <laughs> you can come to our movement and we will welcome you with open arms. But let me just say this, we are never going to sacrifice any of our principles, ever. And some people are going to be unwinnable. Like, I see, and this is, I don't know how big, you know, the percentage is, but I see some of Elizabeth Warren's more notable supporters, you know, the blue check marks, who are really hoping that, you know, we'll wind them and dine them, uh, we'll maybe massage their feet, rub their back a little bit, kind of persuade them, buy them dinner in order to get them to come on board. You know, they're a little bit hurt over the snake emojis. And let me just say this. If you are not basing your support of a candidate on a policy, we can't win you over. We, we know we can't win you over. And if the snake emojis bothered you, I can assure you Elizabeth Warren is going to be just fine. This is a white woman with millions of dollars. She's going to be just fine. The snake emojis didn't hurt her, I promise you. And if, and if snake emojis hurt her, then, I mean, you're not going to be Donald Trump. So, look, we're running against the system, and I want all the Elizabeth Warren supporters to understand, if they thought that we were too mean, that you don't win unless you aggressively push back against smears and misinformation you can't it's not possible right you can't do it if you are just going to stand idly by and be polite and civilized while the system steamrolls you you lose so i'm sorry if you know we sent a couple uh too many rat emojis at pete when he lied about medicare for all which is a life-saving policy i'm sorry that we sent snake emojis to elizabeth warren when she was lying about bernie sanders but this is how we have to do things we can't not be aggressive we can't afford it and if you're not aggressive going up against donald trump you're gonna get eaten alive and let me just read i'm not gonna put anyone on blast but i do want to read just some of the uh, blue check mark sentiment towards uh bernie sanders i don't know like, like this one here did you do a video, this is in response to Robert Reich, did you do a video asking Bernie supporters to stop it with snakes, stop burning bridges, and uh, stop burning bridges with potential allies? So, I mean, like, because Bernie supporters sent snake emojis to Elizabeth Warren, then that's reason to not back the person who is clearly ideologically aligned. Like, if you if you think this way, I have no respect for you, because that's, that's, that's immature, right? That's so entitled. Uh, sorry, but you weren't nice enough to me, so I don't think that poor people should receive health care. Okay, well then fuck off. I don't want you on our team. I don't want you on our team because clearly you're not in it for the right reasons. You're not in it for the right reasons. This one here. As a Warren supporter, I probably align more with Bernie politically, but I've been so turned off by the behavior of Bernie supporters since 2015 that I just can't support him. What we tolerate defines our character, and Bernie has tolerated horrible behavior. Oh, okay, so <laughs> the, like, numerous times that he had to denounce 
uh, his supporters in mainstream media. I guess that that wasn't enough. Um, and it's funny because there's this assumption that it's only Bernie supporters that are horrible. If you look at the Elizabeth Warren subreddit, all, like whenever they talk about Bernie Sanders, they put progressive in quotations when they talk about him. I mean, they are always going to hold us to a higher standard than they hold themselves. And it doesn't matter if we apologize and be polite to them. They want you to bow down. But we're not going to bow down because we know that if you're not in this for policy, then nothing we say can convince you. We can't be nice enough to you. Nothing will win you over. So I'm not going to kiss your ass, you fucking white suburban wine mom liberals and, uh, you know, blue checkmark journalists, Liz lads who think that, you know, we're going to roll over and die. Sorry, you don't get anywhere in American politics. You can't take on capitalism unless you got a backbone. This is why Democrats always get wiped out because all of you lack backbone. So, um... Yeah, we care about policy, so we aggressively advocate for that. But this is such in a this comment is just so perfect here. And this is really what I respect. This is from um Maurice Kreisman. She says, As a feminist, I mourn what's happened to Elizabeth Warren, but as a sufferer of chronic illness, I know we have to move on with Bernie. And that to me, I have nothing but respect for this person. She, you know, disagreed with me in supporting Elizabeth Warren over Bernie Sanders initially. But for a lot of people, this election is life and death. I don't get to just, you know, base my support on the identity of a politician. I don't get to say, you know what, maybe I'll vote for this person because his supporters were really nice and they wooed me. You know, they uh, took me to dinner. They wined and dined me. They sent me heart emojis. That's not the way that this works. We have to do that. Like, we have to support the candidates that we support and absolutely relentlessly advocate for them because we don't have a fucking choice. If you do have a choice, then you're pretty privileged. Congratulations. That's great for you. But not everybody gets to make that decision. Not everybody gets to make that decision. I'm voting because my, my nephew needs insulin. I am voting because I have student debt that I will have for the rest of my life if I don't get that eliminated by Bernie Sanders, right? So I'm going to vote for the person who is looking out for me personally and for the rest of the country, immigrants, the downtrodden, homeless people. That's how we have to base our political decisions on i can't choose to you know not support someone because their supporters sent me snake emojis like what a fucking dumbass thing to base your support around what an absolutely like insufferable human being you are that you're that special that you think that because the supporters some supporters of a candidate were mean to you that you're gonna vote for someone who is a conservative like if you supported elizabeth warren and you're going to Joe Biden, then you just have to admit that you don't care about policy. And maybe American voters just don't care as much about ideology as I thought. I mean, you know, you think that they'd vote in their own self-interest. I saw these polls, exit polls from Super Tuesday states, and every one of them supported Medicare for All, and then they went on to vote for Joe Biden. So we're going up against, you know, a population that has largely been brainwashed by corporate media, and the deck is stacked the fuck against us. So if you're worried about snake emojis and not capitalism, then we can't win you over. And maybe we shouldn't win you over. Maybe we don't want you on our team because you're not a serious person. If you're not passionate, if you don't feel that fire in your core to fight for the things that we're fighting for, you don't need to be on our team. So I'm sorry to all these Daily Coast, blue check mark, feminist suburbanites on uh, Twitter. I'm a feminist too, but these are fake feminists, right? These are fake people who claim to care about marginalized communities, but at the end of the day, you see how easily they abandoned their principles and vote for Joe Biden, someone who uh, voted against gay marriage. I mean, I saw this tweet, and I, I wish I could give credit. Pete Buttigieg endorsed Joe Biden, who voted against gay marriage. He voted for DOMA, and he endorsed him over the person that supported him before he was born. I mean, think about the world that we're living in. American politics is so dysfunctional, and part of this dysfunction is because there's an instability built into the system because we live in a capitalist society where it is... It's just automatically going to, by default, defend the status quo, right? And so maybe once in a while, you know, we punctuate that equilibrium and we get an FDR in or we get someone in like a Bernie Sanders who makes a difference. But at the end of the day, we never stop fighting. And if you you just are willing to throw aside your principles because, you know, you got a, one too many snake emojis. All right. Say la vie. Don't need you in our movement then. I don't think we could work with you. You know what I mean? So, um... At the end of the day, this this isn't a decision. Like for Elizabeth Warren, there's no decision to make. If you don't endorse Bernie Sanders, then everything that you claim to care about, uh, it, it's meaningless. It's meaningless. 
and you weren't here for us in 2016. So if you're not here for us in 2020, you think we're going to be here for you in 2024 when you inevitably run again because Joe Biden will lose if he's the nominee. And, you know, there's going to be a whole new set of corporate Democrats. I can't imagine Bernie would ever want to run again. I, I wouldn't want him to for his own, you know, uh, mental health, you know, and physical health. But, I mean, it, you can't put yourself through that. But, I mean, we're going to have a whole new class of Democrats. They're all going to be shitty corporatists. And, you know, the Democratic Party has got to realize that they are – they're turning off a generation. And maybe partially that is our fault because, you know, millennials and Zoomers aren't coming out to vote in numbers that we had hoped. But at the same time, I mean, I don't blame voters. I don't look at them and think, man, you guys are so stupid for not voting. I mean, people feel like their votes don't matter because the system really beats you down. It drags you through the mud and makes you feel like you're worthless and nothing you ever do or say can make a difference. So it's not like – you know, I, I can't empathize with them. It's not like I can't, you know, understand where they're coming from. So we've got we've got our work to do. And, you know, over time, I think it's really important that progressives are introspective and we look at what we could have done differently. But at the end of the day, part of, you know, uh, participating in electoral politics is this, you know, this this sense of accepting that some things are out of our control. We're never going to win over corporate media. Whoever the lefty is, they're going to be attacked by corporate media. It doesn't matter who, it's going to be the same playbook. But maybe by then we have more people, um, if it's not too late with climate change, right? So, I mean, like, we, we can control a lot, but you can only control so much. So we just have to keep fighting and doing what we can and understand that politics isn't just about electoral politics, right? It's about building movements, forming coalitions, and making sure that we empower the working class. And more importantly, most importantly, to be specific, we let them know that they do have power. The working class does have power. It is in their control. And you don't just have to wait every two to four years to exercise your power by voting. You have power as an individual and you can take action. So we're kind of seeing, you know, Working class people across this country find their voice. We're seeing polls reflect, at least, you know, exit polls show that socialism is preferred to capitalism, even in areas that uh, Joe Biden won, in states that Joe Biden won, if I'm remembering correctly. So, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. But at the end of the day, um, what Elizabeth Warren does, um, if she hasn't already fully, you know, taken the mask off, is going to determine her future. If she ever wants a future in American politics, she has no choice but to endorse Bernie Sanders. But I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't. With that being said, though, if you're on board with us, then this is an easy decision for you if you, you know, uh, vote based on policy. Um, so I kind of took this in a couple of different tangents. Don't really know where I'm going with it. But I just kind of like I, I haven't talked about politics in a couple of days. So I've had a lot on my chest and it just kind of exploded into the microphone now. But um, that's that's where we are. You know, we just we never stop fighting. Leftists are always going to be marginalized. Leftists are always going to have to fight 10 times harder than centrists and conservatives. But we have to do that because we're fighting for the right causes. We're on the right side of history. Everyone else is not. So when you have the moral high ground and you're fighting this uphill battle against a disgusting killer of a system that literally is like crushing its population, like, you have no choice but to keep going, and you can't let it get you down, because we expected this, it sucks, but we keep fighting. Every day is a new day, and a new area of opportunity for us to improve, so um, we just, we keep going because we can't stop. Because if we stop, then we give up, and working class people, marginalized communities, trans people, women of color, people who need us, are losing fighters, and we can't stop fighting for them. We have to do it not for ourselves, even if we feel down, but for other people. That's the thing. If I feel like I want to give up, then I think I can't give up. I can't. I have no choice because there are people in this country that aren't comfortable enough, that can't fight for themselves, people sleeping out on the streets, right? People who are going to die if they don't get health care. So if I feel selfish enough to give up, then I'm just not being empathetic, empathetic enough towards people who who can't really fight, who don't have a voice. So that's that's what we do. We just keep fighting. That's what the left does. We fight no matter what happens. We get elections. They come and go. The outcomes sometimes are good. The outcomes are sometimes bad. But regardless of how it turns out, we just keep fighting. And that will never change.